So they're applying the base coat uh, before the tiling is being done and whatnot. So, and you'll notice that the paint brushes, they've got bamboo. They took some bamboo and they attached the rollers that I bought to the bamboo just to extend it. And I tell you, they are cracking on here. They've just painted the bedroom. I think it, the base coat, this base coat didn't take longer than about seven minutes for him to do it. He was just whipped around it. So, of course, it's only the base and not the finish, but it's looking bright and beautiful already. When we originally designed the building, my intention was only to put these two windows in, but Damo, uh, without me knowing, added that, that third one, and she was right to do so. It really does bring a lot of light in, in here. Still not out of bill. For, um, the stairs for the balcony for the ceiling and then they're cracking on with the next job now that's just how it goes I said it in my last vlog don't expect the bill they're gonna keep cracking on um, but they, this team are doing a real fantastic job they're very very professional they got a good attention to detail and one thing I like about this team is that they clean up as they go along so uh, in previous builds a mess was left whereas these guys are cleaning up as they go along and they're very considerate that way so Do you remember what this used to be, Tess, here? Cabo. It was a shower, wasn't it? Yeah. So this was a shower that I built, some may remember. got quite overgrown now and we took since took the shower out and the play and it's kind of fallen to bits so it's time to take it out and make space for a garden here isn't it Tess? Yeah and, and we will have to cut all these ones yeah we'll have to and, cut all that down yeah and take this one out yeah that's right it's a big job isn't it yeah and take one out too should we go and have a look around the back yeah here it is from behind isn't it what a mess. Well, let's start this job. Are you going to help? Yeah. Right, come on then. So the sink is still plumbed in and you can see by all these little uh, blue pipes we do all the plumbing ourselves on site it's all quite easy it comes from a tank over there that's our well it goes very 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 deep into the ground it's actually a commercial not a residential one i think we've had it now for about two or three years we've not run out of water the guy that installed it said you'll get 20 odd years out of it so let's see um if it did run out we'd have to put another one in elsewhere but that pumps all of our water we have replaced the pump twice though they're about eight to ten thousand baht for a new a new pump it pumps the water up, up some pipes here and then into the back to the to the house to the cottage to my bamboo and to the kitchen we haven't run pipes to Damo's bamboo but we have run pipes for the hose to water the garden so it's just a little I mean you can build it yourself and it's good when you build it yourself because if something breaks you just replace the pipe yourself just use some of these blue pipes here and a bit of glue and uh, your grand job is is easy and keeps you busy working in the hot sun quite sweaty now it's particularly hot today 
got my wellies on. Sometimes I wear gloves, but I generally not wear gloves when I'm using a camera because it gets fiddly with the um, with the buttons. So, but when it when I'm doing more dangerous jobs, I'll I'll use gloves, especially going out like in the back here, messing around with the pipes there because that's perfect scorpion and snake hiding place there. Um, so I've cleared this out now. Um, I will eventually unplug this sink and unplumb it and then we'll probably rip all this up and make a nice little vegetable patch here. Stuff grows really well here because it's in the shade. It gets a little bit of sun but it's in the shade. Um, the pounding sun in Thailand is not good for growing vegetables we found. Like if you were to plant something out in the open here, it just batters the veg. Um, you're actually better in a little bit of shade and things grow very well here. That's also reflected in, you see these hedges over that way? Um, they've grown grown up since we've we bought them, but uh, these ones have grown super. They've grown very, very big um, there, and that's because they just get that little bit of shade, a little bit of shade from the, the Thailand sun. So will I build another outdoor shower? I think I might, uh, I kind of want to. Also, we talked about putting a hot tub up on the balcony, um, but no, it's, it can't take that kind of weight, uh, but it could take a little shower up there. I'm, I'm not sure you want to be completely naked up there on the balcony in the morning with the locals looking up and catching a catching a glimpse of your um, your bottom shaking in the morning breeze. Yeah, we're excited. This is not going to be long now. We, we're kind of working on getting the windows here. So Dan was talking to a few companies and hopefully we have the windows in the next six days. So let me address this very odd log here, this uh, column. Number one, it's not gonna stay that color. Um, it was just a test to see, that's too dark. So we'll strip all that off and we'll put some a lighter color on, on it. Number two, you might see it's quite bent here. Yeah? It's not straight. I've gotta say it's growing on me. At first we planned to put a second arm there, so it kind of like two arms coming off. We still may do that. But even if it's bent, it's a little bit quirky and it is, it's growing on me to be honest. So we'll decide at a later, certainly the colour's going to change, but we'll decide on a later date if it's going to have a second little arm or we're just going to keep it like that. Tis, we're not feeling well, are we? Yeah. We're not feeling well, we got cold, so we need some eucalyptus tea, don't we? Where's the eucalyptus? Do you see one? Where? Oh, there's one, isn't there? What colour is the eucalyptus trunk? What, white. White, isn't it? Perfect. And they're the oh, leaves. Right. Mommy. Get some of those leaves there. Ah! <laughs> ah! Pull them off, will you? What are you waiting for? Get those eucalyptus leaves. Pull! <laughs> ah! Pull them, will you? Go! Go! There you go, you got some, yeah? Daddy's got some too. There you go. So what we'll do is we'll dry these. <laughs> we'll dry them. Leave them to dry for a long day. Hey. And then we'll make a tea out of them. So about a half a teaspoon of dried leaves <laughs> in a tea. Good for colds. But don't do, don't do them fresh. They need to be dried. Uh, they're not good for you fresh, I believe. That's eucalyptus. Fresh off the tree, isn't it, Tess? <laughs> What's it called? <laughs> well, what's the tree called? Uh -huh. Yuka. Yuka. Eucalyptus. Eucalyptus. <laughs> <Oi. laughs> ah, <that> tree. <laughs> We're going to be making some eucalyptus tea. Separate out the leaves. Ready for drying. It's good for a cold, bib. What are you cooking, bib? Kapaka Isla. Samrat pom, my cap. ลับลับหมูไม่ใช่ลับกายไม่ได้กินหมูครับไม่กินหมูแล้วคุณกินหมูหรอรักมิสเรย์ไม่ใช่หรอไม่กินหมูครับ So I'll, I'll dry these leaves now nicely set and um I'll make a eucalyptus tea, good for colds and flu. It's just like a soothing brew. And just grown right here. 
locally, local leaves. I don't think the eucalyptus tree is actually native to Thailand. I think it was brought over here. They see it as a bit of a pest. I think they pay, they don't quote me on this, but they pay you if you cut a eucalyptus tree down because apparently it takes all the nutrients of the other trees. So um, I think they, they actually pay you to get rid of them. Uh, and it's not it's not illegal to cut them down, but they are very beautiful big trees. Um, they've been cutting them down behind here, unfortunately, and we've only got one one big one left. Um, they cut the other ones down. Yeah, that is what you thought it was. Just crashed the drone again, and <laughs> I'm the most terrible drone pilot of all YouTube vloggers, Thailand vloggers. I am the worst at flying this drone, and the damage this time. Look at that! Camera's falling out. There it is. We got one broken propeller here, snapped off. We got this cracked here at the front. What's happened to this? In there. It's broken, isn't it? Let's have a look. Oh, Tiss. Do you think you can fix this? No. Really? Yeah. Well, what are we going to do? What are we going to do then, Tiss? Yeah. Well, what can we do? Maybe we can send it back to the port very far. Send it to the post, yeah, and get that guy to fix it again. Yeah. That guy's putting his kids through college on me, isn't he? Yeah. Because I, I send it every month, don't I? Yeah. Thanks, Tess. Mm. What you just to do then? Maybe we can send it in the post. Send it in the post, but whose fault is this? Daddy. What, and what did I do wrong? Daddy tried to grow. How many times is this, Bev? Every six months. <laughs> and it's expensive. Every time it costs us 3,000 baht to fix it, doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> You're supposed to move it slowly yeah, through the sky, but I move it too quick. I didn't check where I was going, did I? That's the tree that it hit up there, trying to get the shot. I'm, I'm looking at my phone. Okay then. All right then. <laughs> Rub it in, will ya? So the feedback so far from this build, people are enjoying the journey, which is good to know, and quite surprised with the speed of things. Um, and so are we, really. It really is, uh, they said four weeks. It could, could be one to two weeks by the time we finish at this rate. And for both, for both Damo and I, this project, although it may seem quite small to some, has been a, a life's work in, in, the, in the process of it, you know? It's like nothing happens in life until you kind of get off your ass and make it happen, you know? If you want to move to Thailand, you've got to get off your ass and make it happen and move. If you, if you want to build something, you've got to get off your ass, go to work and, and earn the money. Um, it's nothing, I think some people could be complacent, they can look at our life and think it's just kind of given to us all this, but I can tell you this has been eight years work uh, for both me and Damo, working our asses off building this family, working our asses off her on her little business, me in my, in my career. Um, although this is not a lot of money for a lot of people, for us it's a lot. And we're, both me and Damo are very much aligned in, the, in our kind of attitudes is we push things to make it happen. Like it, it doesn't just kind of pop up like this. We ask the builders, oh, this is what we want and it's kind of just done. We have to constantly push and push and push and talk to different suppliers and get the materials and be up early and, and be pushing these things forward, pushing our life forward. Not just in projects that we do like this with the farm and the animals and the bamboo huts and all this stuff, but as parents as well, pushing forward to develop Otis, pushing forward to 
fight our own demons and fight our own depressions and our own, our own insecurities of being on so public on YouTube as well. There's a lot into it, in, in, into what we do. It may seem through the camera that oh, it's just kind of easy. Uh, we might make it look easy. But for us, it's not always easy. It's quite difficult. Damo started this project when she was when she was pregnant. She still is pregnant. She's dealing with a lot of stuff now. You can see her in the background, kind of telling the builders what to do while she's heavily pregnant. Um, I obviously had to fly over and, and go back to work. And there's just these things that happen in the background. I guess the point that I'm trying to make is that in life, there's a lot happening in our life in the background that you just don't see on the camera and there's a lot more kind of like this there's a lot of stress there's a lot of challenge there's a lot of motivation required and if there's any message I'd like to spread is that if nothing comes easy in this life or very rarely does it come easy uh, if you have a dream and you want to do something you've you've got to push it into existence you've got to be motivated you've got to be able to have control of your own addictions and and demons and you know, make choices in your life in the present moment that lead one step closer to heaven instead of one step closer to hell. And every choice in the now, every micro choice takes you one step closer to heaven or one step closer to hell. And you generally know which of those choices uh, are which, you know. You know when you're making a choice that is something wrong and, and is not going to um, supply a future you with a great future. It's not going to help future you. You know because our conscience tells us that, right? And my conscience tells me that if I were to sit around and smoke pot all day, now it's legal in Thailand, that I'm not really going to get much done, yeah? Or if I was if I was drinking, if I start drinking again after being sober for so many years, it's not going to be productive to our family and to what we're trying to build here, you know? They're two things in my case. I'm not saying they're for everybody, but in my case, I just know that they'll, that'll take me one step closer to hell in terms of one step closer to heaven is like how can i get up earlier how can i um i can how can i provide for the family how can i lead the family how can i make sure we've got what we need um that's one step closer to heaven so that's my little rant today and and the overall summarized point is that nothing comes easy and it is it is difficult and we have big dreams and a small budget and we're, we're saying you know to hell with it whatever we're gonna make our big dreams come true on our small budget because we've got the creativity, we've got the passion, we've got the motivation, we've got the teamwork, and, um, and that's what we're doing here. So I just wanted to give you an insight into some of the thinking behind what we're doing. So is this your favourite place in the whole house up here? Yeah. And is this, you don't come up here alone though, do you? Yeah. You can only come up here with mummy and daddy, yeah? Yeah. What do you think? What do you think that's going to be? A light. That'll be a light, won't it? Yeah. And my dad's going to be up there. That'll be another light, won't it? Yeah. And here will be a little sofa where you can sit. And you can look out the window, see? Oh, see everything there, can't you? So is this your favourite room, Tess? Yeah. Can you see everything down there? Yeah. That's cool, isn't it? Oh. Got some good dancing. Oh. What did you say? I'm your best friend. Thank you. You're my best friend too. <laughs> that turtle dance. <laughs> 
Oh yeah, barley dance. Shows how they do the barley dance. They do like this, don't they? <laughs> the Balinese dancing. It's all in Bali, isn't it? <laughs> so a quick interlude here. This is the guy that empties our drains. So when your tank gets full at the back, he comes and do key, they say. So here he is. And uh, our drain is pretty blocked up at the back there. Maybe once every three to four months you need to get this done uh, with our system. So there are other systems that you can get, but our system, we do this one. What's that say there on your game? What's that say? Chicken. Chicken. It says Psst, the chickens are watching you, doesn't it? Yeah. Uh. <laughs> dun, dun. <laughs> dun, dun, dun. Chickens are watching you, Tess. Where's Tarja going now? In the rice field. Why is he going out into the rice field? And that is where he lives. He lives there with the buffalo, doesn't he? Yeah. So he takes care of the buffalo. Yeah. And what do we need to buy for him now to help him? I don't know. Some solar cell light, isn't it? Yeah. Because he can't see, can he? Yeah. Light is by you, do I, mate? Come on. Oh, no, 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 I don't know where to go. Couldn't buy you got how die, no? You got why do I? So if any of that was lost in translation, my dad's going out living in the rice fields again. So my wife's dad has, he has about 30 rye of rice field all around here. Uh, I think it's, is it two rye to an acre or two acres to a rye? I don't remember. But um, he, it's a big rice field anyway. And he goes to live out there with a the buffalo so the buffalo can roam free out there. Uh, he's set up his very uh, basic. Some of you have seen it before. And for those that have not seen it, I'm gonna be covering it in a following vlog. So please do hit the subscribe button and the notification bell. And I'll be doing a little tour of his place, his setup. But for now, I'm gonna buy him some uh, solar lights because he's got no electricity out there where he lives. So I'm gonna get him some solar lights, some Lazada and some other bits and bats. I, I do take it upon myself to help him out out there because Although he farms all this rice, it doesn't actually make a lot of money. And the money it does make, they give to the kids and they put into the uh, into the family. So they won't. He won't stretch to buy his own solar light. Same. I bought him some tools once. I have a new toolbox with a, an angle grinder and all this stuff. And then I found them in the house, all packed away neatly. And I said to Damo, "Why is why is all these tools packed away? These brand new tools I bought your dad." He said, oh, no, they're too beautiful to use them. So he was scared of using these new tools because he'd get them dirty. That's just the kind of people they are. But um, we'll sort him out with some solar gear. And when I take it out there to him, um, we'll do a little tour of his place. Right, what were you doing to it? What do what do you think is for the fly run away? Right. Oh, I know what you mean. You mean like lemongrass, yeah? Yeah. For the mosquito. No, that's that one over there, see? The melon, did one it look like? That one doesn't keep the mosquitoes away. There you go. That's the one there, see? Yeah. Smell that one. Watch your hand, though. It hurts, it hurts your hand. What you can do is like smell that one there, and, yeah. and that's the one the mosquitoes don't like, isn't it? Yeah, nothing I like. Oh, I like it. it smells so nice. Right. Hmm? What's your name? Oti. How old are you? Four. Where do you come from? 
come from Thailand. Where does your daddy come from? England. Where does your mummy come from? Yai House. At Yai House? Thailand. Thailand. Where does Hugo come from? Mummy Belly. Mummy Belly? But what country does he come Mommy from? Eh? What country does Hugo come from? Thailand. Thailand. And what's your favourite colour, Tess? Yellow. Really? Yeah. Okay, then what's your favourite thing to eat? Hmm. Gummy poo. Gummy poo? <laughs> yeah. Aye. And last question is, is water a solid liquid or a gas? Solid. Is water a solid liquid or a gas? Liquid. That's right. Is air solid liquid or gas yes and is this this and is this a solid liquid or gas solid. that's right good job tis